Now, we have been contrasting the teachings of Jesus with the teachings of Muhammad. We're looking at the DNA. Now, Jesus taught that we're, we are all children of God and that God was our father, Matthew 6.10. Muhammad considered it blasphemy to call Allah your father as Allah took no wife and has no children, Surah 5.18. Jesus taught that man was made in the image of God. Of course, that goes back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, and then Genesis 9, 6, where it says, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Muhammad taught that Allah has no image. Surah 42, 11, Surah 112, number 4. Uh, Muhammad taught that God was transcendent and a noble. Jesus taught to forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's a pretty big teaching in Christianity. It's in the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And um, uh, that basically God will not forgive us if we don't forgive others. This is a, a very foundational teaching. Well, Muhammad taught to avenge trespasses and to avenge insults, uh, those that are committed against one's honor. Uh, uh, insults against one's family or insults against one's religion. You're, that you're taught that if you get insulted, that you're obligated to uh, retaliate, to do vengeance. And if you don't do vengeance, well, then you're uh, uh, a, a bad Muslim. One of the famous stories is um, um, there was uh, Muhammad when he died. There was Caliph Abu Bakr takes over. He's the first Sunni. He's m one of Muhammad's father-in-laws. His daughter was Aisha, the six-year-old girl that became Muhammad's wife. And he didn't uh, consummate it, according to the Hadith, till she was nine. But Abu Bakr was the first caliph. And uh, he died. Then there was Caliph Umar, and he was murdered. And then there was uh, Caliph Uthman, and he was murdered. And then there was Caliph Ali. Now, Caliph Ali was the, uh, um, the son-in-law of Muhammad. So the Shiites traced themselves to the son-in-law, to Ali, Shi Ali. And so we have the battle between the Shiites and the Sunnis is the battle between the followers of the son-in-law versus the followers of the father-in-law. So this is all a family type of thing. Well, when Caliph Umar, Uthman died and Caliph Ali was chosen, this was the one moment in Islam where the Sunnis and the Shiites were together. But Uthman had a relative, Muaya, and Muaya did not think that Ali retaliated and did enough vengeance against the killers of Uthman. And so uh, Muaya decided that he was going to do retaliation and vengeance against Ali. Sort of an interesting story that Muaya has his men with their swords and spears write Quran verses and stick them on the end of their spears and charge at Ali's, Ali's men. And Ali's men sees these spears coming at him with Quran verses on the end, and they don't know what to do, so they just stop to fight, and they surrender. And so that's how Ali lost. And, uh, but there, there would be unity between the Shiites and the Sunnis, except for this teaching of retaliation. And since Ali did not retaliate against the murderers of Uthman, Muaya retaliated against Ali. So retaliation is responsible for the two segments of the Shiite and the Sunni, that it is a key foundational aspect of Islam is to retaliate when a wrong, an insult has been done to your honor or to your family's honor, to regain the family's honor, you have to retaliate. And now this is a foundational teaching in Islam. So where Jesus's foundational teaching is you do not retaliate, you forgive, Muhammad's foundational teaching is to retaliate. And uh, anyway, so when violence was committed against Jesus, he did not retaliate, but allowed himself to be crucified. When violence was committed against Muhammad, he retaliated, ordering his enemies killed. And then the concept of a martyr in Christian and Jewish thought is one who would die for their faith. The concept of martyr in Islamic thought is one who would die for their faith while killing infidels. Jesus taught that religion is from the inside out, that God is not pleased with forcing anybody to believe, that he doesn't, 
take your uh, arm and twist it behind your back and say, believe. If God was going to force anybody to believe, he would have forced Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree in the Garden of Eden, and we'd have been done with it right then. But the Judeo-Christian God has given the freedom of will, the freedom of choice. And so that's key. And he says, OK, Adam and Eve, here's the garden. Here's the tree. Uh, don't eat from it. I beg you, don't eat from it. So he says, look, here's the good choice. Here's the bad choice. Please choose the right choice. But you got the choice. And here with the law, with Moses and God says, OK, here's the law. Here's the blessings. Here's the cursings. Choose life. It says, OK, here's the yeah, put it up before you. Please choose this one. But you got the choice. And so the Judeo Christian God, you know, puts it out, spells it out real clear and begs us to do the right thing. But he gives people the choice to accept him or reject him. So it's a faith that's based on an internal uh, decision. Well, Muhammad taught that religion could be forced from the outside in, that you could force somebody on pain of death to convert. Otherwise, they would be killed. So Christianity is a religion from the inside out and Islam is primarily a religion from the outside in.